Hi, this is our first episode. I'm Manan. I'm Abhina. I'm Ishan. And we are three men on the road. You know what set the tone to the journey was the way we came to McLeod Ganj. Yeah. Instead of taking the 12-hour bus ride from Delhi till McLeod Ganj, we took a train till Pathan Court. And from Pathan Court, we came via Kangra Valley toy train till Kangra. Exactly. During the toy train journey, you get to see the best views of uh, Dhauladhar mountain range and especially when the train runs around that uh, Maharana Pratap mm -hmm. reservoir. And I think we were really lucky because when we were travelling, uh, a lot of clouds gathered and started raining and it became so awesome. We were still trying to decide whether we should go and sit on our place or we should go and stand by the door. Because it, as it passed through the hills and it was raining, it looked very amazing get to interact with the locals, you get to hear the stories, you get to share the food as well. Ha, ha, ha. So Ishan was carrying some very awesome delicious Besan laddus Besan which Besan auntie had sent. Thank you auntie. Yeah. And <laughs> those, those laddus actually helped us uh, socialize with the locals a lot. We distributed the laddus and we started talking which I think was an amazing thing. Thank and you remember Ishan. that really uh, railway station be before Kangra, Jwala Mukhi? Jwala Mukhi. So, ha, so a lot of people got down on the station because it had two temples going up that way. Yes. Yeah, there was Jwala Mata temple and, and there was Chintapurni. Chintapurni. Yeah. So the best part about the train ride is I think the Kangra station. Yes. It has the old world charm. It's like one of those railway stations built by the Britishers and since then it has been just like that. There is one tea shop at the station. You get the you get to see the snow-capped peaks of Dhauladhar from there. And from Kangra Kangra station, you can get a taxi or a local bus till Kangra bus stand. And from Kangra bus stand, you can either take a bus till McLeod Ganj, or you can take a taxi till McLeod Ganj as well, which will charge you around five to six hundred rupees. Yeah. And the first thing we did after coming to McLeod Ganj is we visited this cafe called Elitrati. Mm -hmm. It's run by an Indo-Belgian couple. Wonderful place, there are lots of books, more books than the space to keep them. Yeah, you know, this is what we've noticed is McLeod Ganj, jitne bhi cafes hain, all of them have book collection. Uh, you can actually just go through the books while you're sipping your coffee. But what set Elitrati so apart was, first was the size of their collection and the second was the collection itself. But they had books on spirituality, religion, uh, tantra, tantra occult. occult, politics and the best part is you can even buy the books over there. Exactly. And the other uh, really good thing about the cafe is they have amazing food, yes, the homemade ice yes. cream and the other thing. The grandmother's secret pancake. Exactly. With orange and chocolate sauce. Yes. <laughs> we, we had two of them one after the other and they were absolutely amazing. So when we were at uh, Elitrati cafe, we met this guy, a traveler from Israel named Eyal. Eyal. Yeah. So he's a traveler, a photographer and, and a biker, biker oh, yes. as well. And I thought, okay, body spitting somebody, that's like a regular thing here. <laughs> that's how it works. Yeah, you know, it's a very fast punishing system. Right. <laughs> and we asked him about his journey through India on a bike, his experiences, so strange things that happened mm -hmm. with him. Yeah. And we also asked him the way he manages his finances while traveling through India because we have seen one thing, these foreign travelers, they come to India for like a longer span. Yep. And while some of them, they come, come here with the savings, there are quite a few who come to India and then this work. Yeah, they make money on the go. Yeah, there is yeah. one thing we saw, there was a very funny thing. There was a poster in uh, McLeod Gunge about this Colombian guy who puts movies in your laptops, mm -hmm. iPads and he earns money by that. He puts all the latest movies. Yeah. <laughs> because there is one thing, there is no theatre nearby. So that's the only way we can get to watch movies. So yeah, we asked him about all these things. During my last four visits, I would always rent motorbike wherever I go. Right, right. But it's nothing like riding an Enfield for uh, 5,000 kilometers. Yeah. So let's let's hear more about your bike trip. Where did you start? Well, I started in Goa. Mm -hmm. After I've, I've had enough of Goa and I felt like uh, I need some taste of real India, mm -hmm. I drove to Gokarna. 
and from there I carried on to Humping, okay. which is uh, one of my favorite places in India. But I've been to Humpy three times before, so I left only after like five days. Mm -hmm. And I read in the Lonely Planet Guide about uh, a fort in Bidar, mm -hmm. which is in northern Karnataka. And I went, uh, 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 I was like the only tourist there. <laughs> and you drive for hundreds of kilometers and then you arrive at the fort and you say, okay, that's a nice fort, <laughs> what's next? Uh, so yeah, I spent like two nights there and drove to Elora, mm -hmm. next to Rangabad. Uh, the Elora Caves are extraordinary. I, I am amazed that it is not known as the Taj Mahal because it's, it's just right. breathtaking. And uh, it's something, by the way, that I see in many places in India that don't... Uh, I think that the Indian authorities don't uh, take advantage true, true. of the tourist potential of India. Like... Uh, you know, you go there and it's not really organized as much as it should. And, right, right. Uh, the, the Elora, the village, is not really developed as a tourist attraction. And on, on, one hand, they, on one hand, maybe it's nice because it's not touristy. On the other hand, I think that India has much to offer. And many foreigners, when I tell them Elora, they don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's a shame. So from Elora, I drove up north to Omkareshwar. Mm -hmm. I was just walking around every day, taking photos. Uh, Shivaratri was really nice. Uh, and it was nice to get out of the touristy scene. Like right. when you see a tourist on the street, you're like, hey man, what's up? <laughs> you know, because you have something in common. You know? And I met this Spanish dude, which was. Uh, amazing guy uh, first of all because he was living there for many years and he could speak fluent hindi mm -hmm. and for me uh, like being able to see india through his eyes was a very interesting uh, discovery because as long as i don't speak hindi while in india mm -hmm. i will stay a foreigner right and i just see the tip of the iceberg and i cannot understand the way of thinking, I cannot understand the complexity of society, uh, the effect of the caste system. True. Uh, I cannot communicate with women mm -hmm. almost never in India, only in the big cities. And that's very important. <laughs> for me, <laughs> yeah, of course, yeah. But it's also, well, in India it's 45% uh, of the population. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> um, so this, this guy really, uh, was submerged in Indian culture. Like, I see many foreigners that come to India, they open a business, but most of their friends are foreigners. Right. Can, but this guy, yeah, like every day he would go to his cafe and he would have like two sadhus sitting and doing what sadhus do. I don't know. To <laughs> yeah, ah, but sadhus can do that. And all the, all the village know, knew him and uh, he would tell me about all the complexities, all the underground of the village, the underground of India, and it was very, very interesting. Um, from Omkareshwar, I drove to Bundi. Bundi was, uh, was a, it's a very cute place. It's like Pushkar with much less tourists. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's really cute. I think it's going to be uh, a much more uh, bigger tourist. It's, it's going to be on the map in a few years. Uh, th these half touristy places always have this charm because people are not yet. Uh, how do I say this? Uh, in places where people where you have an excessive amount of tourism, uh, there is a lot of money involved. That's and right. Yeah. Money corrupts. Yeah. So in touristy areas, uh, you can e if people sometimes can make you feel like you're a walking wallet. Yeah. Uh, and is even yeah, yeah. So you, you come to a place where there aren't many tourists, so the, the people are much more genuine, and, yeah. and the interaction is not based on what I can give, what they can give me. Uh, 
And yeah, it was a great city and the fort was really nice. <laughs> and Bumi. Yeah, another fort. Uh, and after a few days I went to Pushkar, which is a place I've been to many times. Pushkar, yeah. it's magic. Yeah, Pushkar is heaven, it's like a tourist bubble. <laughs> and what I like about this uh, place is that I have a tourist bubble, it's very social, you meet tons of people, you eat great food, mm -hmm. accommodation is cheap, uh, and when you have a motorbike, whenever you feel like I've had enough of this bubble, I want to go out, you take your motorbike and you drive out. Yeah, so I visited the uh, animal shelter there, which there is an animal shelter. And uh, last year when I was in Pushkar, I, I did one day of shooting only uh, only people's houses from the inside. So, uh, I was driving from Delhi to Vrindavan for the Holy Festival. And on the way, uh, I saw many policemen mm -hmm. and one of them was beating this big Indian guy uh -huh. and I thought okay police beating somebody that's like a regular thing here <laughs> that's how it works yeah you know it's a very fast punishing system right. <laughs> and, uh, and then I saw all the cops running into the bus like there was like an emergency elsewhere so I was following this bus <laughs> And I arrived to a place where there was like a mob of 300 people at least. Okay. Everybody holding clubs, uh -huh. yelling with like a lot of anger in their eyes. So I stopped my bike and I took my camera out because I'm a photographer, that's yeah. what I do. And all of these people would gather around me with sticks and say, no photography, no photography. <laughs> and I said, okay, okay, but just explain me what's going on. And it turns out that at least they thought that the Muslims killed the cow. Oh, okay, oh. okay, right. And uh, they were angry. <coughs> and there were a lot of police there and a lot of tension. And I took my camera back in and everybody told me to go away. So I pretended I, I was going away and I flanked <laughs> the area from another well, direction. I came to Goa five and a half months ago uh, okay. in, in order to come and work as a photographer. Uh, thing, the first thing I did was I, I bought a motorbike in Enfield. Okay, so you have been working as a photographer? Yeah. yeah. I've been shooting weddings, parties, uh, and lots of other gigs like uh, fashion. Garments. I do see people that manage to make money on traveling. Uh, it depends on the people. People that do massage, tattoo artists. Right, right. I have uh, friends that do far shows, musicians. Um, some people uh, do Reiki. There are many ways, but if you're good mm -hmm. and you know how to do, deal with the business side, right. uh, India has a lot of potential nowadays to make money. As a photographer, I can tell you that this year I made more money than I needed in order to make a living in, okay. in, in Goa. Right. And that was just the beginning. Nobody, like, I don't, I'm not known yet in Goa. Right, right. Thank you for watching the video. You can subscribe us on YouTube. And you can also like us on Facebook at Three Men on the Road.